Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Fader. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message or forecast for the week between November 24th and December 1st, 2018. We've just made, I'm, I'm here in Athens visiting, seeing clients and working and uh, meeting other astrologers as well. Maurice Fernandez, the president of the Organization for Professional Astrology is here and we've just made a communal video uh, Facebook live you could see it on the OPA discussions uh, page on uh, or group more more correctly on Facebook and on my page and we've done so with Angela Tikis the uh, representative of OPA Greece amazingly knowledgeable in the mythology the Greek mythology as well so I really recommend that video and Maurice and me and we're talking about the larger cycles and how they fit into this full moon but I'm here to talk to you about the transits that are going on throughout the days of this next week. So we are coming from a very potent full moon that has happened at the, at the zero zero degree of Gemini. The sun was opposing it as in every full moon, conjunct Jupiter and Mercury in Sagittarius. There's so much knowledge, so much truth and wisdom that we are opening up too. And there's this optimistic feeling that we want to sail on and take this world as an adventure, take this life as an adventure, and in a way, expand, dare, um, not let our fears and anxieties, our need for stability to stop us. But that optimistic uh, uh, kind of um, atmosphere is dampened by a square to Mars and Pisces conjunct Neptune telling us that there's greater processes that are going on, that are taking place, that are out of our control, we cannot anticipate them, and they could make us feel powerless. They can make the individual feel powerless and have power failures or even feel like one is drowning. That Mars, that lone warrior is in the ocean. <clears throat> but, the greatness of Mars in Pisces is working collectively. The drop becomes the ocean. And working collectively and altruistically to correct whatever it is we need to correct. And forgiveness is another great aspect of Mars in Pisces. Not dividing ourselves into us and them anymore. Understanding we are swimming in these waters together. And if we want to uh, uh, heal, we need to unify and walk on together, forgive each other. Mm, great coffee here in Greece. So, um, this week our communication is really, really important. We are having a square between the planet of communication, Mercury, in retrograde, squaring Mars in Pisces. We need to put the line straight between not acting in a sacrificial or, or um, um, martyrial way within our relationships and communication, not being the victim, and making sure that these hurt feelings don't create a communication that, that is too conflictual, that is too aggressive, that is even violent with its speech. Mercury will be moving into Scorpio at the end of the week. And Mercury in Scorpio doesn't need to punch anybody to disassemble them. They aim a well-placed word. And the man can crumble like a deck of cards, like a house of cards. Because the, the power of speech is really amplified and honed with Mercury in Scorpio. We can see the undercurrents. We can understand the psychological truth beneath the surface. So we know exactly where to push. So, as they say in Spider-Man with the great Stan Lee, the late great Stan Lee, with great power comes great responsibility. So watch your words and how you state things over the week, because it really counts. When I look at Saturday the 24th, it's a kind of a confusing day because the moon is in Gemini asks, asking us to do a lot and move faster. But there's a square to Neptune that is a bit lit, uh, brings on lethargy and a bit of, of, of 
you know, wanting to just lay back and be more passive and do things that are more of a right brain orientation. So there's a bit of a conflict there. I would say take it slower. Uh, tell Gemini to rest a little bit. On Sunday, the 25th, we have a Cancer Moon and we have a Moon trining Venus. It's a very nice, pleasant Sunday morning. Uh, the evening is much more invigorating. There's much more energy with the trine to Mars. Great time for uh, physical activity. But don't be too harsh judges of yourself or others. Don't let others bring you down as there is an opposition to Saturn. To not, that night from the moon on the 26th it's a monday that's the time we have the conjunction between mercury and the sun uh, between jupiter and the sun that means jupiter is going to go into a state of kazemi at the heart of the sun and a day later mercury is going to do so as well and a little later than that they're going to join mercury and and jupiter so all of that energy is directed into opening our minds up our beliefs our philosophies our horizons bring in more truth bring in more wisdom it's a great time to do any ceremony that you would want to do about finding your own truth and living your own truth asking the universe to show you the truth and help you to abide by it um other than that, it's the day of the exact square between Mercury and Mars. So again, watch it. And there's an opposition to Pluto. Be, remain open-minded and not too obsessive about things. Uh, Tuesday, as I said, there's the Sun conjunct Mercury. Mercury is in Kazemi. Again, a beautiful time to do a ceremony and think of how you would want to navigate your life ahead. Um, don't ask for too much. Don't be too indulgent. Um, communication at that day is beautiful as the moon trines Mercury and Jupiter and the sun. And basically it brings a spirit that is depicted by the sextile of Mars and Saturn that day. Of responsibility to our deeds and actions. The understanding that they have strategic importance right now. Both in our personal lives and in general. And at the night time, we have the conjunction between Mercury and Jupiter. This is a great time for inspiration, great time for great ideas. <laughs> and anything that is of an expansive nature to your mind, to your spirit. 28th, Moon is in Leo. Don't have much to say about that. 27th, Moon is in Leo as well, so fun, fun, fun. 29, the moon moves into Virgo, and these are the more stressful days of the week, the 29th, the 30th, and the 1st. That's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Don't ask for too much on the 29th. Do try and remain um, humble on that day. On the 30th, uh, there could be a conflict between the male and the female side. It's a great day for business, though. It's a great day to take important things forward. Um, noontime could be a little tired, though. And if you are forgetful or a bit messy during that day, let it go and go on with the important stuff. Saturday, the 1st of December, kind of a very, very sensitive day. Um, from the afternoon onwards, it could be better and there's more energy in the sky. Mercury moves into Scorpio, but... It's a time that we really, really want to watch out in our relationships, things regarding our jobs or satisfaction, anything Venusian, because that's the time that Venus, I think for the final time uh, for a while, will oppose uh, planet Uranus in charge of walking forward and sudden changes. So if we don't want sudden changes to happen in these Venusian aspects of love, relationships, satisfaction, money, self-value, my relationship with myself, my relationship with others, then we better watch it. We better watch it. If we do want an upgrade, if we do want to change, this is a great time to do it. But do it wisely and choose your words. Uh, choose your words very, very well. Anyway, that's about what I had to say. I want to thank you for listening and sharing and commenting because that brings these videos to more people. 
and i hope you enjoyed it you can always contact me for personal consultations or for private lessons and courses have a beautiful week namaste thank you and goodbye